I'm Chef Lynn. Welcome to the Flavor Secrets Kitchen and welcome to my guest today, Molly McDonald. Molly is the president and founder of the Pink Fund, which is a very important organization, mostly for women, but not all women, right? Right. In, in Detroit. So I think it's such a great story about how you founded the Pink Fund. Would you tell us a little bit about it? At the time that I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I was transitioning between jobs. And um, that cancer diagnosis detoured my career aspirations to the off-ramp while I underwent treatment and recovery. And like many American women, my income was really critical to our family's very survival, very basic needs. And without it, I had a COBRA payment of $1,200 a month for myself, and my husband, and my five children. And we had to make some very challenging choices in those times, those months. Sure. And it ended up that our home went into foreclosure. Um, I had to call Ford Credit every 60 days to beg them not to come get my car. And at the end of my treatment, when our families and friends started to stop delivering food, I found myself in line at the local food bank. So really that summer I thought, who helps these women? There was no help for me. I couldn't get any help. And somehow I decided, what if I could give help? What if I could start an organization to give help to make bill payments for working women who are unable to work and without a paycheck during treatment? And that's basically what the Pink Fund is. It helps that's people with their bills while they're going through chemotherapy, right? Right. For three or four months. Right. As they need some help with their with their income. Um, how does someone apply? To, for well, it's very simple. Our application is on our website under Get Help. Okay. There are eight. The website is <coughs> thepinkfund.org. Okay. And there are eight pre-qualifying questions. So we added those in last year because we were getting so many applicants that we couldn't take care of. Mm -hmm. So once those questions are answered, then you can go on and access the application, print it out, fill it out, add all the verifying documentation, and mail it in. And how many people did you help last year? This is what I think is amazing. Well, this year we're on target to help over 200 by the end of June, we will have made, in our current fiscal year, $232,000 in bill payments. That's awesome. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. So that's the reason today's show is about foods that help fight cancer or help prevent cancer, right? So there are 11 of them. First is cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables are those in the mustard or the cabbage family, like broccoli, like kale and collards. Um, and a great place to find these is Asian markets and organic markets. You know, it's really important to buy organic so that you don't get the pesticides in your body. So remember, fresh and seasonal, and chew your food because it's the chewing. I just learned this recently. It's the chewing that releases the chemicals. It's really, really important. So my goal today was to use as many cancer-fighting examples or as many cancer-fighting foods as I could in one meal. So today, in that category, we've got the bok choy and baby bok choy is just as good. This happens to be fully grown. Next is dark green vegetables. That, those have really powerful antioxidants and they're thought to block cancer development. So it's really, really important that you get your green vegetables. They also contain folate, which is also on our list. So today we're gonna make a beet and goat cheese salad paired with a leafy green vegetable. And by the way, the, the leaf vegetable is so much better for you than iceberg lettuce. Right. It has so many more minerals and things in it than iceberg. I just, I really don't buy it the anymore. The darker the green is always better. Exactly. That's a, that's a great thing. That's a great way to say it. The darker the green, the better it is for you. Okay, and then we're also going to use the greens of the beets themselves, and I'll show you how to quickly prepare those. Next, green tea. We don't have this in our meal today, but it's actually thought to retard cancer growth. And by the way, it has a third the caffeine that you find in a cup of coffee. And also make sure that you get real green tea. This is where you might want to frequent the Japanese grocery store because they, the most potent types come from Japan. So look in Asian stores for it. I have to jump in about the green tea. Okay. I'm not sure about this, but you should check with your oncologist while on chemo. I think green tea is uh, contraindicated while in treatment. While in but treatment. But great okay. before or after. So that's but really good information. you do want to check on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next is vitamin D, which is a proto-hormone that likely is thought likely to interfere with cancer growth. Many studies, studies on humans have shown vitamin D is instrumental in reducing the risk of colon and breast cancer and improving the survival rates of lung cancer. So make sure you get your vitamin D. And you know, my doctor tested all of his patients in Michigan for vitamin D, and We're deficient. three quarters of us mm -hmm. didn't have enough. I mean, my vitamin D was around 10. 
and it should be more like, at the low level, it should be more like 25. Yeah. I think that everybody should have their vitamin D tested annually and get a vitamin D3 supplement. You know, you can right. take a supplement in addition to eating healthy foods. And it takes a long time, even with all the sunshine and the golf in the summertime, it really takes a long time to build up your vitamin D, so I take it all the time. And another good source of vitamin D is wild-caught salmon, so we're going to show you how to quickly prepare some wild-caught salmon today. Next, number six, folate and vitamin B9. I mean, we've been hearing about vitamin B9 for years. It's thought to have great preventative properties for cancer. Again, the leafy green vegetables, we've got a lot of them in this meal. Beans, peas, lentils, asparagus, those are all good. And so for today, we're going to make some, some dried kale chips. This is what kale looks like in the raw. And we're gonna show you how to dry that and keep it around and be able to use it just for a quick snack. I have to say something funny about kale. Please. Well, often when we go to a food buffet, we've seen how they just garnish all the food with kale. We ha didn't start really eating kale until a few years ago. We didn't mm -hmm. realize what a powerful food it is. Yeah, powerful is a good word for kale. So when you go sure. through a buffet, if you see some kale, just take that out and put it on your plate. Mm -hmm. Eat it raw. Oh, take it out of yeah. the buffet display. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love that. Put it on your plate or put it in your purse and take it home uh -huh. and have it later. I don't eat it raw, but I do saute it and I do dry it right. and, and use it as a garnish or as a snack. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you a couple ways to make it, to add some things to it to make it spicy and really delicious if you have trouble with that. It's a little, it has a little bit bitter space, mm -hmm. bitter taste, excuse mm -hmm. me. It does, it is a little bit bitter. Yeah, okay, now we move to the spice family and the two best spices are ginger and turmeric. Ginger reduces inflammation and also stimulates digestion. You know, when you get a tummy, it gets good to eat ginger cookies. Mm -hmm. I, I pick the cookies. <laughs> And turmeric reduces inflammation and actually improves liver function. In test tubes, now I know it's in test tubes, but it has been shown to kill cancer cells very quickly. So we'll use both of those today as a little rub on our salmon. Eight is beans and lentils. We don't have these in our meal today, but I can give you some ideas for how to use them later. They add fiber to your diet, which is crucial and it lowers your risk of digestive cancers, like colon cancer and prevents damage to DNA. Fish, like salmon, which again mm -hmm. we'll use today, also has omega-3 mm -hmm. fats, and those turn into anti-inflammatory properties in your body. So they're, it's really important for you to eat a lot of fish. Do you agree? Twice a week, at least. Twice a week, mm -hmm. at least. I probably With the omega-3. With the omega-3, mm -hmm. okay, I probably, it, those are the more fatty fishes. Mm -hmm. I probably eat fish more like three times a week. And we're going to use a healthy cooking method for that as well. We, we plan to bake it. Okay, number 10, you'll love this one, <laughs> is chocolate. Right. And the more cocoa, the better. I've got actually some couverture here, which is 60, almost 60% cocoa. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a highly, highly wonderful thing to eat. And we're gonna make a nice chocolate mousse with avocado that is Molly's recipe. It seems to offer some protection against heart disease, stroke, and cancer. And again, in moderation, you, I don't think you wanna eat the whole, whole bar, bar of no. couverture every single day, but in moderation, chocolate is really good for you. And the last one you'll love too, red wine contains resveratrol from the grape skin, and it's really good for your heart and also works against cancer. But remember, alcohol is a slippery slope, so right, right. unfortunately it's only one glass for women and two glasses for men. So, so let's talk about one glass, ladies. It's not eight ounces, it's four. So measure. Right, so measure. I hate to say that too because I hate to do it myself. I hate that. Myself. And you know, I always say they take our breasts and then they take our wine and it's not right. That's not fair. <laughs> no. So can we give them both of them and just keep the wine or what? Yeah. <laughs> All right, enough talk. Let's get cooking. Well, I love making chocolate mousse. And prior to cancer, I made chocolate mousse with the eggs, the egg whites, the whipped cream. You had to mm. have all kinds of containers, and it was fattening, and it was hard to make. Mm -hmm. And I was on a retreat, and I had this amazing chocolate mousse. And when I learned that it was made with avocado, I was just blown away. So I want to show everybody today how to make a really amazing dessert that tastes delicious. And when you serve it to your guests, do not tell them that there's avocado. Ask them to tell you what is the secret ingredient. Mm. And I that's to always say, fun. When I saw the recipe, I was quite surprised. Right. Okay. <laughs> so it's so easy. You basically throw all these ingredients in together. So you have two fairly ripe avocados. Be sure to pit them and be careful when you pit them that you don't 
cut yourself or injure yourself. Are you showing me from experience? You, no, I saw somebody actually kind of slit her arm. Ooh, yikes. A pinch of salt. That would be my sister. She always does that. A quarter cup and two tablespoons of cocoa powder. And you do not have to put this in in any particular order, which is so great. And if you have a little extra cocoa, it's not going to worry. It's not like baking. You don't have to level it off perfectly. So I'm going to give and you we're that. using all high quality ingredients. You notice we have right. Ghirardelli chocolate. Right. Then you have a third of a cup of agave syrup. That's your sweetener. It's low glycemic, so it's going to help balance your blood sugar. We don't use any sugar in this recipe. If you like, you could substitute honey. Now uh, you should should you get raw honey? Tell me I don't a bit think about so. Honey. I, I don't. You know, I'm not a nutritionist, so I want to be really careful not to mislead people. But you have to be careful about honey. Um, in fact, you should look up online why. But there's something that's in honey that can compromise your immune system, and that's why you can't give it to babies. Okay, and you can't. You shouldn't take it during treatment, right? Honey during I, right. treatment. Right. Okay, so now we put in coconut milk. Quarter cup of coconut milk. Now make sure you, you always stir your coconut milk because there's a, the thick cream rises to the top. Right. So she's already done that. I've done that. So a quarter cup of coconut milk. There you okay. go. And a half teaspoon of uh, real vanilla. Do not use artificial vanilla. Don't skimp. You're worth it. Remember that. You're worth it. You're worth it. it. Right. You're worth all the real ingredients. So I think we have everything in there. It tastes great. Oh, and the melted chocolate that we showed you at the beginning of the show. Do not melt the chocolate in the microwave for a couple of reasons. You can burn it accidentally, and then you're going to you're going to miss out on your ingredients. And the microwave has radiation in it, mm -hmm. so I, I recommend not using the microwave. If you do use the microwave, you can keep from burning it by doing it 10 seconds at a time. Zap it 10 seconds, stir it 10 seconds, stir it, and then you, you won't burn it. But I also am against using microwaves. Owie, that's hot. Oh, I'm so okay, sorry. Okay, so I just wanted to say also about the chocolate. What I did, that was a big block of chocolate, so I took a big knife and I just kind of shaved off the amount that we needed. Mm -hmm. Or you could get um, semi-sweet chocolate chips that you might use in cookies. You want to use the dark chocolate for this, right? Right, bittersweet, okay. or uh, semi-sweet chocolate. Okay, how does this go? Okay, here we go, so watch. We're gonna pulse this. I can still see some avocado in there. So we want this to be totally blended. getting there. Okay, and then I'm guessing we want to scrape down the sides too, right? Right, right. It is not smooth enough yet. Okay, just a little bit more, and then we'll put it in the cups. Now our avocados were a little hard, so it might not be as smooth as we want, I don't know. I still see some avocado floating in here. I think that's probably okay. Okay. I don't know how to get that I out. like chunky things. You just do that, that's okay. all. Wow, okay, so look at this. Lynn, I'm gonna let you put it in the cup so I don't make a mess. Okay, <laughs> thanks a lot. But it's beautiful. <laughs> and then, um, you know when you make cookies, you get to lick the bowl, so be sure to do that, but don't cut yourself on the blade. Now you can either uh, put this in a pastry bag and pipe it, in, or you can do it just like this and then just kind of smooth right. it out. Smooth These out cups the top. are easy to use. The, the oh, you want to do up. another one? Yeah. And then I'll show you how we'd like to garnish this today. The heart, as you can see, this little pin on here, the heart is also associated with the pink fun. That is right? our logo, and it really um, is our heart for helping others pin because that's, we know what we do. We have a heart for helping other people at a time when they're really challenged. Okay. And that ribbon on there re represents breast cancer. I went too high on here, but whatever. Okay. So what I'm going to do then is use my little heart. That wasn't a very good place to set that, was it? Here, let's just kind of move these things out of here so that people can see what we're doing. It's just some you can see how beautifully it sets it up. Okay, so for, to garnish this, I've got this little heart tool. I'm going to put it on there and then just shake some confectioner's sugar on it. And what we'll end up with is a really pretty little heart. A lot of people have shakers, but if you don't, you can use this little strainer. And That's then so I'm just going to put it on a plate. 
and garnish it with a strawberry. What happened to our knife? There it is. Garnish it with a strawberry on the side, which it's okay if it has a little. So berries are really important antioxidants, and when you buy them, be sure to buy the organic berries. They are more expensive, but remember, less is more. You don't have to eat the whole container. And then we can put a little mint, a little mint. Mm. You know, you eat with your eyes first, so when that mint first comes to the table, it gives you a, a beautiful smell and makes you more interested in your dessert, and if you need to be. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> All right, now let's get on with the meal. Okay, now it's time for the main part of the meal. We've got our bok choy here, and all I'm doing is cutting across the greens. Today we're just gonna use the greens and we'll use the rest of this for another dish another time. So I just cut straight across them, that's called chiffonade. And I'm throwing them into about a third of a cup of chicken broth, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of soy sauce too. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of stevia just to give it a little tiny sweet taste. Now, you could you use vegetable broth, too, if you're a vegetarian? Absolutely. That's a great question. You could use vegetable broth. You could use tomato juice. You could use anything you like that you, that you really love. And I want to cook these only until they wilt. So just like you cook them just like spinach, just for a few minutes until they all wilt. So we can leave that sit there. Now we've got this beautiful piece of Copper River salmon, wow. my mm -hmm. favorite. It's gorgeous, isn't it? That's mm -hmm. its natural color, no artificial coloring. And we want to use our spices, our turmeric and our ginger. So I've got two oh. teaspoons of ginger there and one teaspoon of turmeric. I'm just going to add a little bit of soy sauce, a tiny little bit. And then I'm going to add a little bit of oil, just enough to make a paste. Okay, and this is probably enough wow. for about six pieces of salmon, I was gonna I'm going to that. say. That's a lot. Okay. Yeah, it's a, a lot of paste. Probably you could use it for six. And I just, you hit that and, and I did. turned it off. That's all right, we'll turn it on in a minute. And then I want to just put a little bit all over it. You can use your fingers if you want to. Get that great taste in there. And then we're going to fry this. First, now I think frying has a bad rap, but honestly, if you put a little bit of olive oil on that and baked it in the oven, you wouldn't use any more olive oil than I'm going to use right here. I'm just going to use like a teaspoon of olive oil just to make the bottom of the, of the pan a little bit a little bit um, greasy. Now, that's a terrible word, but anyway. Now I want to cook this because it has skin. I don't want it to curl. So I want to cook this this side down. And I'm going to cook that until it looks like I want it to look for my guest. And you can watch the side of it and see as it turns white halfway up. And then I'm going to flip it and finish cooking it that way. So Lynn, is this a one portion? This is a one portion, right. I'm glad you pointed that out. I like to cook fish in these little pans. I have about six of them. And the reason is because then I can get every single piece perfect. Wow. That's okay. true because there's always a different uh, width to it. Or right. Thickness. So while yeah. these are cooking, while these two things are cooking, we'll move to the salad. Next is our amazing beet salad. Oh. And we're going to make this inside a ring so that it's pretty. I always like to give people ideas for pretty presentation. These rings are kind of expensive. You can get them from jbprints.com. If you want, I think they're 10 or $15 a piece, but if you don't want to spend that kind of money, you can go to your hardware store, get some three inch PVC pipe, wow. and have somebody cut three inches of PVC pipe, and you can do the same thing. The only thing you want to be careful about if you order them is that there's not a seam in there, okay? So that's what we're gonna build our salad in. I've already cooked the beet greens, and I did them just like the bok choy, Right. okay? I just made a little chiffonade, and I cooked them in a little bit of water. Now I want to dry this off. You could even let this cool first if you want to, but I want to dry it off a little bit. Otherwise it'll run all over my plate because it's hot. Okay, so we're just going to put those in the bottom. And then if you want to take some goat cheese and put that on, right on top, it may melt a little bit just because these are hot. And I was trying How to get them want? that much, about a quarter of an inch all over the whole thing. Okay. Just kind of, you can press it down and yeah. what we want to do is make sure that that it's, gets it all is the moving way around. to the edges. That's great. Yeah. Well, I actually, love goat cheese and beets. It's so good. More, more cheese, more cheese. Okay, more cheese. <laughs> okay. And then make sure you get the cheese right out to the ends because so when that we, we take the ring away, right. we want to see it. It's like the glue, isn't it? Um, not really, no. No? Okay. Actually, the ring will hold lots of things, just regular salads or all kinds of different things. More cheese, a little bit more cheese. So you're probably going to use 
a quarter to a third of a cup of cheese in each salad. Here, let me just kind of show you how to do it. I'm going to take a little more, or maybe a half a cup of cheese, and then see how I'm oh, pushing okay. here. Right, okay. Then it comes around to the edges. All right, I was being too stingy being with the cheese. Not stingy with the cheese as much as um, timid. Okay, timid. Okay. That's a nice word. Next, we're going to put our beets in here, and you can see that I cut the beets into strips. I did that because of the presentation. I want them to go in there easily, but also they cook so much faster. You only need to cook these strips about 10 minutes and your beets are done. And another can, great use for beets is raw, um, shredded into a salad. People don't think they can eat beets raw, but they're really quite delicious, especially absolutely. if they're small. Absolutely, mm -hmm. okay. Yep. And if you don't think you like red beets, try yellow ones mm -hmm. because they're a little less, um, they're a little less strong. They're, they're not as strong. So the yellow ones are a little milder. And also notice that I kept all the beet juice, because what, what I'll do later is I'll boil that down until it's almost a syrup, oh and then gosh. I can use it for a plate decoration. Oh my so gosh. So I'm not wasting I love any that. of that. Okay, now we've got our salad here. And on top, we're going to put a vinaigrette. I made the vinaigrette with three tablespoons of extra, vine extra virgin, high quality olive oil, a half a cup of ground pistachios, three tablespoons of grapeseed oil, which is also very, very good for you in an antioxidant, and two tablespoons of sherry vinegar. And I just mix that all together, and I've got a beautiful vinaigrette. Now I'm gonna put this on here before I take the ring off, so that hopefully it'll stay in place. And then if you, the, the sauce will stay on there is what I'm saying. Like that, isn't that beautiful? And then if you want to, you can put just a few more whole pistachios on the top for a little bit of garnish, but you don't have to do that. Because actually, I like it better without it because then the whole thing is, has got that shiny, glazy look. And then you may have to wipe a little bit around the bottom. And you can just lift your ring off. And there's a beautiful stack salad. See, I put a little bit too much bead on, but you can always fix it just a little bit. It's still pretty, even if a couple pieces fall off. Who cares? And you could probably just garnish it if you wanted with a little fresh greens. Right, or? you could. But I always like to put things on the plate that people are going to actually eat. Okay. So I would garnish it with some green okay. lettuce. I'm taking mine off. And, <laughs> and then and I, I would maybe vinaigrette. put just a little bit more vinaigrette without all the nuts. I'm mm -hmm. kind of choosing what's a, a little bit saucier mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. I put on, on the beet greens. And actually so I could pretty. put this on both sides. So you've got a pretty substantial salad there. I mean, I could see serving that for ladies' lunch, and that's all I would serve in a, in a little dessert. Mm -hmm. By the way, your chocolate mousse, for right. sure. That and your chocolate mousse would make a really nice ladies' lunch instead of the standard chicken we always get. Right, that's right. right. I love that. That's okay, beautiful. So let's clear this up, and then we'll put out the whole meal. Yum. So you all know how big I am on garnish. I have one more just really quick thing to show you and that's how to dry kale. It makes a great, really, really healthy garnish. I love it. So all you do is break off this stem, take a little teeny bit of olive oil, I mean like a couple of drops, wow. and then use your fingers and that'll go over that enough over that whole thing. Then you can spice it how you'd like. Now I made some today with some very finely grated Parmesan cheese on there and I made some with a spice. And I actually love the spice. This is. Um, Legend barbecue rub from Seasons Harvest, and I just kind of sprinkled that all over it, and then you get a spicy kale. You, wow. Then you can use, as I said, and or the Parmesan. Then put it in a food dehydrator if you have one for about an hour and a half, or if you don't have one, you can just put it in your oven. A low um, oven, a like very low. Maybe. Yeah, like 200 mm -hmm. would be great. And then just watch it because you never know how long it's going to take. Sometimes it takes 15 minutes and sometimes it takes a half an hour or just, just kind of watch it. But you can see how it turns out. So I'll pick this really pretty one with Parmesan on it for our presentation here. Oh, I'm sorry, I put a shadow. We made earlier, so I'll put that down. Oh man, this is a great green leafy meal, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I just love it. And then our Copper River Salmon sits right on top of the bok choy. That is wow. a meal my husband would wow. love. 
He would love that. I'm really glad to know about this olive oil tip because I've made kale chips before and they never dried out and I put way too much olive oil. Oh, that's the key. Right, yeah, there you not go. Not too much not olive know oil that. at all. Just rub it around. And actually you can use flavored olive oils too. There are a lot, there's a store in Birmingham that has, what's that called? Old that World Olive Press. Old World right. Olive Press that mm -hmm. has all kinds of really great um, flavors. Mm -hmm. And also this one I got in California. You can order it online. It's from Paso Levo. This is my favorite lemon oil. I think they do the best job with it because they grind the skins with the oil. Wow. And this is my favorite lem in lemon. They mm -hmm. also have a tangerine that's great that would be great in this application. And then I just need one more garnish, which is a little bit of our double-washed parsley on top of the fish. And if you don't know how to double-wash parsley so that it sprinkles nicely like this, you can go to Chef Lynn Miller on YouTube and find my channel, and there's a little video showing you how to do that. Wow, great. So there's our meal. I think we got that's, through it just fine. Amazing. Anything else you want to tell me about the Pink Fund? What's most important about the Pink Fund? I think what's most important is that the women and families we help are able to focus on treatment and healing. They don't have to worry about the bills we agree to pay during that 90 days. Mm -hmm. So it gives them a 90 day breather. And we know that stress inhibits the immune system. And when you're in that's treatment, true. Chemotherapy is helping to kill the cancer, but we need to boost the immune system. Mm -hmm. Part of doing that is removing stress. So when your bills are paid and you don't have to worry about that, you can breathe. Right. And they tell us in all their emails and letters and notes, you know, just how much it means to them. The other thing I think is really important is that all dollars raised in Michigan, stay in Michigan. Correct. Right. right. And do any go? You mentioned that you've well, expanded to other states. We have a national states. partnership with uh, Ford Warriors in Pink, so that money is distributed across that the country. That explains our outfits, right? Ford our Warriors Courage in the in Kitchen Pink. aprons and our Time to Fight, fight Tees. But um, any money that's raised in Michigan stays in Michigan. If it's raised in Nebraska, it's allocated for patients in Nebraska, and that way we we can say we're a national organization funding families locally. Well, you're amazing, and the Pink Fund is amazing, and I'm so honored to have you come and cook with me today. Oh, thank, thank you. you. This was great. I'm Chef Lynn with Molly McDonald. See you next time.